Hi, I'm Bob. Today, let's learn Chapter Two of the textbook Microeconomics: Theory and Applications with Calculus. Chapter Two is about supply and demand. The quantity demanded is the amount of a good that consumers are willing to buy at a given price, holding other factors constant. Demand depends on the price of the good. Consumers' tastes, the price of goods that are substitutes or complements, consumers' income, information, government regulation, and other factors. The law of demand says that demand curves slope downwards. The higher the price. The less quantity is demanded, holding constant other factors that affect demand. Those other factors are the exogenous variables or environmental variables in the supply and demand model. A demand curve is a plot of the demand function that shows the quantity demanded at each possible price, holding other factors constant. A change in the price of the good causes a movement along the demand curve. When the exogenous variables change, it will shift the demand curve. A change in any factor other than the price of the good itself causes a shift of the demand curve, rather than a movement along the demand curve. We horizontally sum the demand curves of individuals to derive a total demand curve. The quantity supplied is the amount of a good that firms are willing to sell during a given period at a given price, holding constant other factors that influence firms' supply decisions. Such as costs and government actions, a change in price causes a movement along the supply curve. A change in the production cost or the technological ones causes a shift of the supply curve. The total supply curve is the horizontal sum of the supply curves for individual firms. The intersection of the demand curve and the supply curve determines the equilibrium price and quantity in the market. A market equilibrium occurs without any explicit coordination between customers and firms. It is as though an unseen market force, like an invisible hand, directs people to coordinate their Activities to achieve market equilibrium. If the price were not at the equilibrium level, consumers and firms would have an incentive to change their behavior in a way that would drive the price to the equilibrium level. In the graph, suppose the price was one dollar. There was a excess demand or shortage. Some consumers who are not able to purchase coffee would like to offer more than one dollar. The suppliers might raise their prices. Such actions by consumers and producers would cause the market price to rise until it reaches the market equilibrium. Comparative status is the method economists use to analyze how the equilibrium changes in response to a change in exogenous variables. For example, if the production costs increase, the supply curve will shift to the left. As a result, the equilibrium price. 
increases and equilibrium quantity decreases. An elasticity is the percentage change in a variable in response to a given percentage change in another variable holding all other relevant factors constant. The price elasticity of demand, epsilon, is the percentage change in the quantity demanded in response to a given percentage change in price. According to the law of demand, it's always negative. Two common types of sales taxes are the avalodin tax and the specific tax. The specific tax is also called the unit tax. The effects of a unit tax on equilibrium price, quantity, and the incidence of the tax depend on the demand and supply elasticities. For given supply elasticity, the more elastic the demand, the less the share of the tax that falls on consumers is not affected by whether the tax is collected from consumers or producers. The incidence of a tax on consumers is a function of the supply elasticity eta and the demand elasticity epsilon. It can be proved that the effect of the unit tax on equilibrium price is positive. The effect of the tax on the equilibrium quantity is negative. A price ceiling legally limits the amount that a firm can charge for a product. If the price ceiling is below the equilibrium price, it will lead to excess demand or shortage. Sellers use criteria other than price to allocate the scarce commodity. Another price control is the price floor. An instance is the minimum wage in labor market. If the minimum wage buys, that is the minimum wage is higher than the equilibrium wage, then it will cause unemployment, which is a persistent excess supply of labor. A perfectly competitive market is one in which all firms and consumers are price takers. It has the following characteristics. First, the market has many small buyers and sellers. Second, all firms produce identical products. Third, all market participants have full information about prices and product characteristics. Fourth, transaction costs are negligible. Fifth, firms can easily enter an asset market. We will continue to do the exercises in part two.